Children of one planet, Azita would like to thank you all for being here this evening and supporting such a wonderful cause. And now, I would like to bring to the stage Azita and Matt. Hi, good evening. Kate oh, oh. Yeah. Good, good evening. evening. I, would I would like to thank every one of you who have come out tonight to support something that is bigger than all of us. Yeah. Um, um, I would first like, like to start by thanking Azita, who saved my life, life out the bush 20 years ago yeah. and decided to start her own nonprofit organization to stop despair and neglect in children all around the world. The contributions and, and sacrifices Azita has made is bigger than all of us. us. I, can I can never begin, begin to thank her for, for saving my life that day 20 years ago. ago. To Bobby, the heroic fire, fire captain, stand, stand up, who many people don't know this, but after the fire started staying, they were violating me on my way to the hospital. My heart stopped, and if it wasn't for Bobby right here, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you guys because he knew how to get a different heart started, even though I was a victim of every heart child. Thank you, Bobby. I can never thank you enough. Thank you. And I would just like to thank them. I would also like to thank my second family, Ileana, Ricky, and Alexia who are always standing by my side, supporting me, loving me, opening into your family, and just giving me anything I could ever ask for. I would like to thank you guys so much. Ricky's mom, Ileana, actually wrote a letter to Ryan Seacrest that got Azita and I connected. So if it definitely wasn't for her, we would not be standing here right now. I would just like to thank all you guys for coming out tonight and showing your faces and making donations to this amazing cause and this amazing foundation. And I hope all you guys have enjoyed your time here tonight and have loved the film and the food and will love the dancers that you guys are going to see next. And I just hope you guys enjoy your time tonight. And I can never say thank you enough for all your love and support. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. I'm sure that I knew. When I found you, I was bigger than you, but now you superseded. I want to thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you, my best friend, who's sitting right here among all of you. Thank, Thank you, God. God. You are, you are your, your new name is Whisperer. Whisperer. You, you whispered in everybody's, everybody's ear. ear. That's, That's why I'm, I'm here today. Without, Without you, none, none of this will ever happen. happen. He, he woke, woke up, up Ryan Seacrest, Matthew's aunt, who was told him that he was adopted after 18 years. Um, Matthew's best friend, who wrote a letter to Ryan Seacrest. And the, the list goes on. Well, I don't know where everybody's calling starts. But, but my calling starts when I was five years old. I was in the street of Tehran and holding my father's hand on one hand and my red balloon in the other hand. And I thought to myself, I must be the luckiest girl in I've known. 
and he was buying me a sandwich. Um, and then I looked at the glass outside of the restaurant, and I saw all these children are staring at me with envy and sadness. And, and I started crying. And my father said, why are you crying? I said, I'm ashamed to eat when everybody else is hungry. And he said, don't worry. We will buy all of these kids food and we give them money because he knew how bad it was to be on the street because he was an orphan himself and he was on the street of Iran for a short period of time till a very nice woman who saw him sleeping on the gas station on a cardboard and not that he was, he was poor he ran away because he couldn't stand abuse from his uncle. His father, he had died, and his uncle was trying to take over the money. So he was beating him up. So his story touched my heart and changed my life forever. So I promised him, Baba means that One day I will grow up. And I'm, and I'm going to save all the children from hunger and violence. And he looked at me and he said, don't worry, I'm sure you will. But at the meantime, stay kind and compassionate to the people they don't have as good as you do. And I did remember that because my father was my hero. So, so, years went by, 1994, my friend Sue came to me and he said, you're getting divorced and you're sad, let's get out of here. I said, yes, take me to Costa Rica, somewhere that I don't know anyone and people are simple and kind. Not, not that America people are not kind, but at the moment, the person that I was with was not that kind. <laughs> but we went to Costa Rica and we had a lot of fun, and it was New Year's, and the poor children were dancing on the beach barefoot. So I told them, wow, I do feel that this is where I belong to. So I jumped in and I danced with the kids and, and I knew there's something about dancing and happiness that is unspeakable. Then I went to Brazil and I'm standing in the balcony and I'm watching all these children playing soccer, playing, dancing samba and, and then they come back and they put their cardboard and they go to sleep. And I felt like, and they were happy. They didn't have anything, but they were happy. And I knew it has to be sports and dancing. And I told myself, I have to bring this to America. Because at that time, dancing with a star and all those dancing did not exist. So, I decided to create one of a kind fundraiser because I knew if I talk about something sad, nobody will come and listen about children. So I thought I need to bring dancing, something happy, through the happiness, then people will come. And First, I harassed all my engineer friends, and then I harassed the rest of the world, and they all were there because they knew what you're going to see in a few minutes now. These dancers make everyone happy.
Why? Before I met, I found Matthew um, that day in 1998. I was very intimidated, and I told God, "You are not listening. You must be the God of rich people and God of famous people." Because nobody wants to come dance at my show. None of the dancers were responding to me. And I was very sad. I thought, this mission is going to be very difficult. And God said to himself, wait, I have plans for you. So, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I asked for two things. I asked. God, please help me to save the children. The second was, please help me marry George Colony in Italy. Now I know God has either death or has sense of humor because George Colony married a Middle Eastern girl in Italy which, which her name starts, starts with A, a. Amal. Amal. My, My name is Azita. I, 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 I told God, you, you must be kidding me. She works at Human for Child Rights, too. And, and she, she worked, worked no, Matthew, Matthew pointed out, out. She, she works in the children's, children's rights, <laughs> activists. So, so I, I think George, George Clooney married, married the wrong woman. <laughs> well, well, I can't I wait when she's divorced. So. so that was the joke of the day. But well, it was true, really true. <laughs> so, the day that I found Matthew, it truly changed my life. And I thought that I would never be the same. After they took him away, 20 years, I woke up every night. And I asked God, why did you do this to me? Because, because my, my life was more normal. normal. I, was I was doing salsa, salsa dancing, and I was happy, happy. And, and now I'm anxious, anxious all, the all the time, thinking, how I'm going to help all these kids, kids all alone. alone. And, and, and God, God answered me again. again. He, he said, said I'll, I'll, I'll make, make it work out, out for you, somehow. somehow. And, and the day, like, like the week, week before, Before I found Matthew, uh, uh, we reunited on Ryan's secret. I was very depressed, depressed. and I thought, this is, this is, this is incredible. incredible. I cannot see him. Where, where did, did he go? go? Why did he come? Where, where did, did he go? go? And, and, and I asked God the same question again. again. Am, Am I supposed to be rich? Am I supposed to be famous? for news, news and, and media, media and, and people listen to me and, and his, his answer was, was no, no again. again. He, he, he said, wait, wait. I'm, I'm going to wake up everybody, everybody because the world is in, is in trouble and I want them, them to listen to you. To so, so make sure you're doing, doing a good job because I'm, I'm watching you. And, and, and I'm not religious. religious. But, but I told, I told my friend, friend that, that if God, God wants me to continue this mission, mission he's going to bring him to my, my life exactly on his birthday. birthday. And, and Ryan Secrets called me four days exactly before his birthday. His birthday. And, and on his birthday, birthday of 19 May 16, 1998, I got reunited with him May 16, 2018. As I was going to the place that Matthew and I, we went with LA Times, they wanted to interview him. I saw Matthew sat looking, looking at, at the place that, that he was buried, and, and, and I said, Matthew, why, why you're, you're so sad? sad. He, he said, 
this, this could have been my, my grave. grave. I could, I could have, have been born and died in the same day if God wouldn't you bring him. And, and I said, you were, you were the chosen. chosen. Sometimes, Sometimes that thing has to happen to us to great things happen to us. How about if you had a crystal ball today and you will see you save millions of children with your story in this world. Wouldn't you be happy? Then he was not. I hope he never be sad because I wish him the best thing in this world that he deserves because he's chosen to come to save other children with his story. And I hope you will see it because I can see it. I don't know how God told me to become a designer. I was an engineer. I had no reason to be in this dance world. And he told me I have to go there because without going to the dance world, I wouldn't meet all these people that they're going to be a help me tonight to put this show together. I hope every one of you to be in my life and celebrate saving many children and of course animals because I love animals and my animals were the reason we found Christian because they knew this is a human there. What kind of a person would put a human in that? So today I pray for a day that no child, no woman, no person, no animal will suffer from hunger, violence, and illness. Until then, let's keep on praying and be good to each other. Thank you and have a great day.